How's it everyone? Welcome to Open Court. So today I have a long awaited review for you guys. Uh, I've gotten a lot of requests to review this racket so and, I've, and I finally got my hands on one. So today we're taking a look at the Yonex Regna 98. Let's check it out. So I reviewed the Regna 100 on this channel, both generations. Um, and after I reviewed that racket, I got a lot of requests to review the 98. I've tried to find one. Um, it's very difficult, as you guys know, to find one in the States. They're very expensive, usually over $400. Um, but a friend of mine actually had this one, uh, Regna 98. This is the first generation. So I apologize if you guys were looking forward to the second gen. Uh, I haven't been able to get my hands on one of those, but in terms of the technologies and everything, nothing really has changed and I was able to borrow this and test it out for you guys. So I was very excited and I hope that you guys will enjoy today's review. So as you guys know, the Regna series is a Japan exclusive series. They're available in limited quantities outside of Japan. but. Um, for the most part, you can only find them in Japan. If you find it on the secondary market, they're really, really expensive. And the reason for that is because the Regna series is handcrafted in the Yonex factory in Japan. It's not outsourced to China. Um, it's made in-house. And because of the very strict spec tolerance, all of the rackets have very good quality control. There isn't really much different between one and the other. And only 200 of the Regna are made each month which is why they're in limited quantities and that's why they're so expensive so usually at this portion of my racket reviews i usually go over the profile of the racket what kinds of innovations and technologies go into this but unfortunately because this is such a rare and exclusive racket i was barely able to find any information on this on the internet and honestly when it comes to the Regna, those uh, technologies and stuff with all the fancy names, they don't really matter because the only things you, you really need to know about the Regna is that it comes with the time-tested isometric head design that Yonex is known for, which expands the sweet spot out towards the corner. So you have a more rectangular sweet spot, which leads to easier power, easier net clearance, more forgiving feel off center. And also, as far as I know, the second generation of the Regna is when they introduced the VDM, vibration dampening mesh, inside the handle to cut down on the vibrations. As far as what I could find on the internet, this first gen does not have any sort of dampening material, so I expect the second gen to be a little bit softer. And I play tested both the first and uh, second gen of the Regna 100, and I did find the second gen to be softer. So if you guys are concerned about that, try to get, uh, get your hands on the second gen if you want a softer response. Lastly, let's take a quick look at the specs. So the specs are very similar to the E-Zone 98 and the V-Core 98. Um, 310 grams unstrung, uh, 315 millimeter balance, which is pretty ideal for most players. It has enough heft in the head to be able to get good stability, good plow through, even for a 98 but it's also the balance is headlight enough that it has a nice whippy feel and you're able to get the acceleration on the serves, on the reflex volleys and to be able to generate a lot of spin. There's nothing too special about the specs. All right, so I'm done talking about this racket. I know you guys are excited for me to hit with this. I'm excited to hit with this. So without further ado, let's get on the court. Let's take this Yonex Regna 98 for a spin. All right guys, I'm on court with the Yonex Regna 98 version one. The Regna 100 was a very pleasant surprise. I really like that racket, so I'm excited to get out on the court and to see uh, just how the Regna 98 compares to that one. Wow, okay, so initial impressions, right in the center of the sweet spot with this racket. It feels pretty stiff, but because of that, it's getting good control. I can take really pretty big rips yeah, like that, man. Oh, very aerodynamic frame. Nice headlight whippy feel. Coming fresh off of the pure aero play test 
I can tell you that this racket definitely doesn't have as much spin as that one. But this one has way more control. I feel a lot more confident taking big swings, especially on that forehand. The backhand feels somewhat underpowered, but it's not really a problem because the control is fantastic. Yeah, the launch angle is nice and low. I'm having to adjust my swing though. If I swing more vertically, I feel like I'm gonna shank it. Ah. Yeah, wow, the feel at contact feels very good. It's nothing like really I've ever felt before. It feels nice and solid, nice and consistent response. When I flatten out my swing and swing more vertically, that's when I feel like this racket's control really comes into play. Yeah. If you have a horizontal type of swing, I think this racket will definitely suit your play style. <clears throat> so up at the net here, the Regna 100 was phenomenal. I really liked it. It had a nice generous sweet spot. Got good punch right when you hit it in the center because of its stable 100 square inch head. So far, wow. <laughs> so far, the Regna 98 feels a little bit jarring even when I hit the sweet spot. So if you have a sensitive elbow, I mean, you probably shouldn't be using full poly anyway, but this is full poly and it feels a little bit stiff, but it has good control. What I really like about this racket so far at net is it's headlight balance. It's super maneuverable. It allows me to get the racket into place, block the ball back. Ah! <laughs> if it hits the neck cord, I can't do anything about that, but Man, that slice feels good. It does lack a little bit of power though on the low volleys. You might, you might have to push through it a little bit more. I'm catching a lot in the net. Yeah, so far, I definitely think the Regna 100 is more suited towards my volley game. But that's no surprise, that's 100 square inch. Very easy power. This one is more for control. So I think this one is probably more for the baseliners who play aggressive and have that established swing. At net, the 98 is nice and surgical, very fast swinging, but it doesn't give much help with power. So far at net, I definitely like the Regna 100 better for its easier power, but I think the 98 shines better from the baseline because of its control. For me personally, since I serve in volley, the 100 at the net is definitely more, more my style. So I just wrapped up my play test of the Yonex Regna 98 version one. And I gotta say, I wasn't expecting to like this racket that much because I, I'm not a huge fan of the Ezo 98 or the V-Core 98 for some reason. I actually like the hundreds a little bit better. Um, but this racket actually started to grow on me the more I used it. I got used to the response, I got used to the way it swung. Most of the time Yonex rackets work better for me at the net. Um, this racket I actually found pretty good at the baseline. It has a good amount of control. So before I get into the pros and cons, I just want to say which one do I like better, the Regna 98 or the 100? And the answer is still, I like the 100s better. Same as the E-Zone and the V-Core, I like the 100s better because it has a bigger sweet spot. It kind of accommodates my swing style a little bit more. It has good punch from the baseline on serves and a, a generous sweet spot at the net for volleys. I've always liked the E-Zone rackets at the net. The baseline is where I usually struggle with and so that extra square inches gives me a little bit more margin for error from the baseline. This 98 though, I was very pleasantly surprised. I had to adjust my form a little bit to accommodate it. I definitely think this racket uh, benefits someone with a little bit more of a horizontal swing path, kind of like a Federer where you kind of swing straight through, hit a little bit flatter rather than someone who swings vertically like a Nadal. I think this racket will benefit more of those flatter hitters because it has a very tight string spacing in the sweet spot and it has great control. So now let's get into the pros and cons of the Yonex Regna 98 version 1. 
So the Yonex Regna 98 was a racket that I was very eager to try and I haven't really liked the Yonex 98 too much. I've tried the E-Zone 98. The most recent gen was good but the previous gens didn't really mesh with me. The V-Core 98 also. I'm not a huge fan. I like it but it's not something that I could take into a tournament. So I was a little bit skeptical going in to the Regna 98 but I love the hundreds. That one had an enormous sweet spot. It gave me great power. Um, good power from the baseline on serves, good power at the net, so I was really excited for this Regna 98 to be very similar to that, especially with the strict uh, spec tolerance and the promised good feel. At the beginning of the playtest, I struggled a little bit. I was clipping uh, the frame a little bit, which is pretty common with a lot of the Yonex 98s, which is the main issue I have from the baseline. But once I adjusted my swing, it took a little bit of time, but I got used to it and I especially liked it once I flattened out my forehand. I definitely think that the Regna 98 is more geared towards a flatter hitter, someone who swings a little more horizontal, rather than someone who hits with a heavy spin and a more vertical swing path. The Regna has a very tight string pattern right at the center of the sweet spot and combined with the smaller 98 surgical frame, this racket is definitely more geared towards control. The specs are very similar to an Ezo 98, but the Ezo 98 is meant for power. That one packs a lot more punch. The Regna 98 is definitely the most controlled of the bunch when you compare it with the V-Core and the Ezo 98s. So I really liked it on my flat forehand. I could stay aggressive. I could swing away from the baseline. The launch angle was nice and low, so I had no fear about the ball going long, and I could stay on the gas, especially on attacking the forehand returns, which is what I like to do to try and dictate control of the point. The response was also nice and firm, and it had very good feel. I could hit touch shots easily with it at the net, even hitting drop shots um, from inside the baseline felt good. This version doesn't have any sort of dampening technology that I could find, so it was nice and firm. It wasn't too stiff. It was just the right level of response and that's what I felt with the Regna 100s as well. There's just something different about the build quality of the Regna series, maybe because it's handcrafted but it feels premium. Every single shot feels like it was engineered by a team that really put their best effort forward when they were constructing this frame. It's also a 305 gram 315 millimeter balance and so it's very maneuverable especially at the net I could hit reflex volleys very well it didn't have a lot of punch so I had to kind of push out and step into my volleys to be able to put away volleys but it was so maneuverable and so surgical that I didn't really care even on the kick serves I could pronate out and get the kick serves going up and out even on the slices I could hit some knifing slices that skidded nice and low away from my opponent and I could follow it into the net to attack the next shot on the serves, it doesn't have a whole lot of power, but it does have great control and a low trajectory. So as long as I cleared the net with my flat serve, most of my flat serves went in, which I liked. The highlight of this playtest was the great control off of the forehand. It was really just being able to stay aggressive on the forehand, ground strokes and forehand returns, which I really liked, and the maneuverability at the net and the, and the slices that definitely pleased me. So now getting into the cons, I said earlier that it took a little bit of an adjustment period at first when I had to change my swing to be a little bit more flat, a little bit more horizontal. The fact that I had to change my swing at all puts this in the con category because when you purchase a racket, you never want to buy a racket and then mold your game around the racket. Always buy a racket that will benefit or is meant for your playstyle. So the fact that I had to adjust my swing means that this is a racket that really I shouldn't purchase. It's just I really wanted to try it and so I got one and I did. But really the problem I had was on the backhand ground strokes. Because this racket is a surgical 98 with a tight string pattern in the sweet spot, the back, my two-handed backhand just didn't get a whole lot of power and combined with the low trajectory, I hit a lot of backhand ground strokes into the net. I really had to extend out with both my arms and really push out at the ball to get the ball to clear the net at all, which meant that if I had to hit anything on the run, backhand or forehand really, this racket I don't recommend for a counter puncher or a, someone who relies on a lot of defense. The Regna 100s are definitely better on defense because they give you a little bit more help and allow you to change transition from defense to offense a little easier. The Regna 98 won't help you that much on defense. And lastly, because of the low trajectory, I was clipping the net on my slice serve a lot. 
And so that meant my service game became a little bit one-dimensional. I was over relying on the kick serve most of the time because I couldn't, I wasn't confident hitting a slice serve on that second serve because I was dumping a lot into the net. If you're taller than me, I'm only five feet, five inches, 165 centimeters. So I do hit a lot of serves into the net. If you're taller than me and you can clear the net easily, this isn't gonna be a problem for you. But this personally for me meant that I had to really hit a good kick serve in order to make up for my lack of variety. So lastly, let's get into who the Yonex Regna 98 is for. Honestly, the biggest crowd for this racket are those who are just curious about the Regna series. Those who want to try it have heard about its legendary iconic status as a Japan exclusive racket, very limited quantities outside of Japan. If you guys are curious about trying it and you can either get one used or borrow one from a friend like I did, or you can afford that hefty price tag, these Regna rackets are definitely worth the try because there's just something different about the feel and the response. Every time I strike the ball, it has a different feel. It feels very premium and I really like playing matches with both the Regna 98 and the 100. I did not expect to like the 98 as much as I did. Also, I do believe the Regna 98 is more similar to the E-Zone than the V-Core. If you're a user of the E-Zone 98, but that's a little bit too powerful for you, the Regna 98 is like a controlled version of the E-Zone, so this could be a good alternative for you. So that about wraps up my playtest of the Yonex Regna 98 version 1. Sorry I couldn't get my hands on a version 2, I would like to hit with that someday, although the only difference um, between the two that I heard of is that the version 2 is just slightly softer with the dampening technology in the handle. And recently I also saw that a version 3 just came out and I saw the cosmetic and it looks really nice. So hopefully one day I can get my hands on a 98 or a 100 version 3 and play test that for you guys because the Regna series really surprised me. It is my favorite in Yonex's lineup so far of everything that I've tried and I'm really looking forward to more Regna releases in the future. Thank you for watching this review of the Yonex Regna 98 version 1 right here on Open Court. If you guys like this content and want to see more like it, be sure to overhead smash that like and subscribe button and I'll see you on an open court.